Thank you, Steve. That was wonderful. Let's pray together. Most holy God, as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, illumine them for us. Illumine those words so that we may see with joy what you have to say to us today. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Old Testament teaching today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verses 1 to 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your hearts shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. able, please remain standing for the reading of the gospel. Today's gospel lesson comes from the gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, the visit of the wise men. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising. 
until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another word, road. This is the word of God for the people of God. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, y'all ready for this? Ten lords a-leaping. Oh, that was terrible. That was terrible. <laughs> One more try. Ten lords a-leaping. Nine ladies dancing. Eight maids a-milking. Seven swans a-swimming. Six geese a-laying. Well, that was delightful. <laughs> That's currently my son's favorite Christmas song. Today is the 10th day of Christmas, but I'm going to wish you a joyous epiphany a few days early. Technically, epiphany is on the 6th of January, following the 12th day of Christmas, the day after drummers have finished their drumming. But because today is the Sunday before Epiphany, we'll jump ahead to what is what used to be the big holiday. In many parts of the world, Epiphany still is the big holiday. It's the day of gift giving in Spain. It's even a bigger day of gift giving uh, than Christmas. I know this because I was stuck in Spain one time at my friend's house after my passport was stolen. In many Latin American countries, you'll hear not Merry Christmas, but you'll hear Feliz Dia de los Reyes, or Happy Three Kings Day. On the Caribbean Isles, there are parades and there is singing. Uh, there's even a Three Kings cake, which is a lot like the One Kings cake that is known for at Mardi Gras. While the day celebrations are grandest in the Caribbean, on Tuesday night, children in Argentina will lay out hay and grass for the camels that will be coming to visit, um, that will be transporting the kings from the east. They also leave a little note for the kings to let them know how good they've been and what they hope that the three kings will bring. And then they leave their shoes outside their bedroom in hopes that when they wake, there will be a gift waiting for them. As I was reading the scripture about the three kings this week, I enjoyed reading a commentary by one of my favorite pastors, and he was talking about just how farcical this story really is. It's almost, it's almost silly. In many ways, he's right. We heard of the three magi. They're not really kings. They're not really wise men, as we normally call them. They were magi who were basically just astrologers, stargazers. Now, that's already unique, right? Because I'm a Cancer, and my wife and my son are Pisces, and my daughter, of course, of course, Hannah would be an Aquarius, right? Aquarius. So I don't know how well we're going to jive with this Jesus fellow who's a Capricorn, but what kind of temperament does a Capricorn really have anyway? Aren't they a bit stingy? Of course, what makes this story strange is is that they are decidedly not Jewish, right? As we read the Jewish leadership, they missed all of the signs of Jesus' birth altogether. They missed all the signs, but these odd star-gazing Zoroastrians from probably what was modern-day Persia, they were the ones who figured it out. They came from another country following a star, of course, because they saw that something really special was dancing in the heavens. They were focused enough on their craft that even the celest that they noticed that the celestial realm was celebrating something. They even the stars were joyous about something. So they follow a star that does not lead to a manger. I hate to break your uh, bust your bubble for your manger scene, but the scripture says by the time the magi get to Israel, Mary and Joseph and Jesus were in a house they were in a house so sorry to bust your manger scene but when they finally get to israel they stop trusting the cosmic gps 
that had guided them to that point. The star is pointing one way, but Jerusalem is another way. And that's the place where kings are born, right? Kings are born in Jerusalem. So they decided to go with the Jerusalem route instead of the pointing star, which, you know, how does a star really point anyway? And they've got on their fancy clothes and their ostentatious gifts, and they take... The road to Nazareth, it just doesn't seem like a place that you would find a young urban professional, let alone a king. So they would stick out, and you know, if they went to Nazareth, they'd probably stick out a little bit, probably a little bit like Moira Rose does on the television town of Schitt's Creek. The Magi get to Herod. And I suppose when you have an onslaught of prominently dressed folks on camels from another country at your doorstep coming to pay homage to a king, well, I guess you let them in. We think of there being three kings, right? But in reality, there were probably uh, many more of them. We only think of three kings because they have three gifts, but there were probably scores of these magi. And there stood Herod the Great, not to be confused with Herod Antipas, his son who reigned when Jesus was crucified. There's also Herod Archelaus and Herod Philip, and not one but two Herod Agrippas in the Bible. All of these Herods. But really, Herod, Herod, and all the other Herods, they're the same guy. They're all egotistical, insecure, petty potentates in bed with the Romans and clueless about God. And this is also the Herod who has coins circulating around the world with his picture on them. Herod, king of the Jews, it said on these coins. So could you imagine if you have a coin going around that says you are the king of the Jews when a bunch of well-meaning but slightly out-of-touch Zoroastrian fire priests walk into your house and cheekily say, where is he, the newborn baby, the king of the Jews? We came to pay him homage. How do you think he might respond to that? The wise men were probably lucky to get out of there alive, weren't they? Herod was frightened, and so was everybody else who worked for Herod. Their status, their privilege, their prestige was being challenged. They thought that some little baby was going to throw a coup d'etat. So he gathers all the Jewish leaders, ironically, the Jewish leaders, with their ancient scrolls, missed the Messiah's birth, while the wise men with their celestial arts that most would have considered dangerous and deceptive and sorcery are the ones who come in search for this newborn king. Even though they did kind of make that wrong turn there at the last bit, and they didn't bring exactly the most practical gifts. <clears throat> It's not, that, it's not that Matthew is endorsing astrology here, so don't look in the Gospels for your horoscope reading. Far from it. Rather, he's testifying that God is willing to manipulate creation to share that story of his salvation, the salvation of his son. Is, this story is even for those who have never heard of Abraham or Moses or Isaiah For it is the love of God that causes the star to dance in the heavens. Maybe it makes you rethink the ways of God. Maybe God can work outside of our sacred music and our sacred scriptures and our Christian art forms to speak to others. Maybe God might work through even something secular. Maybe we can remain faithful to our convictions. But think about that Think about the Magi when we are trying to share God's love with outsiders to the faith. The Eastern travelers follow the star to Bethlehem and they deliver this extraordinary gift to Jesus, right? Gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And they bow down before Jesus and they are filled with great joy just as Anna and Simeon, faithful Jewish followers at the temple, were filled with joy, and remember that from our scripture last week? These gifts were lavish, and these are not exactly the kind of gifts that you would give a poor working class family for a baby shower, right? If they were three wise women, they probably would have brought diapers and binkies. That probably would have been a bit more helpful. 
But how are they to know that it was a carpenter's baby that was going to be the newborn king? Herod masterminds this diabolical plan to find this new boy king using the wise women or using the wise men. But the wise men were warned in a dream not to give in to Herod's plot. And they went away taking D.D. Highway and a bunch of other back roads and county roads to safety. It's a strange story, right? Three magi with their precious but impractical gifts who get an A for effort. They really drop the ball in the palace with their worship the new king of the Jews comment. But I got to hand it to them. They caravaned across miles of desert because they had a hunch that they needed to bring gifts to a newborn king. And while these gifts weren't on the registry at Target, they were precious. At least they were to the wise men. They were earnest in their quest. I wonder, I wonder what you will be heaping upon the newborn king. What gifts are you going to give? What is it that's precious to you? The kids in Puerto Rico this week are going to leave their grass for the camels. Maybe you don't have gold laying around, but there is something you can profligately heap upon Christ. The obvious thing here might be a check, right? Especially if you're one of those who struggles to let go of what you have. But you know the check, we'll take it, don't get me wrong. It's not exactly the most personal gift, though, is it? It reminds me of the Christmas that my mother gave all of the kids gift cards. Nothing says, I love you, son, like a gift card. Gift cards are a fine gift. I mean, I I gave several out this year, gave them to the staff here at the church. And they're good because people can get what they want, right? But... Gift-giving at its best is not about getting what we want. Gift-giving is about showing someone that you think about them, that you think about them enough to get them something special. Casey's always the best at this. This year she got me something that I'll never use, but it was the most one of those gifts that I will cherish till I die. It was an 1864 British Methodist worship book. She knew that would be something I would cherish, that I would love. I wonder if you can give something special to Christ this year, something thoughtful to Christ. Maybe it might even seem impractical. Maybe it's something old-fashioned and out of touch. But could you write a letter to someone? I mean, not just a thinking of you Hallmark card, but a a handwritten letter to somebody this holiday season, a three-pager. One of those things that tells all about your life and asks questions, and you even include that often cited juvenile phrase at the end, right back soon. Or maybe it's a feast. Maybe that family that lives down the street that's immunocompromised and can't get out of the house, and the one who doesn't have a lot of extras laying around. Maybe you can make them a smorgasbord and get out the fine china. You know that china that you never use anymore? You could leave it at their doorstep and say, look, I'll come back next week to pick it up. Enjoy. The wise guys take a back, to head back home on a different path. Sure, they were scared of Herod. They were smart enough to know that they should be scared of Herod. But there's some mystery there too, isn't there? They, the idea that they came in contact with God, and when you come in contact with God, you'll never be the same. You can't keep going down the path you've always known. It's a new day. It's a new road. T.S. Eliot ended his poem about the Magi with, quote, We returned to our places, but no longer at ease here in the old dispensation with an alien people clutching their gods. Jesus just does not make life easier for anyone or more comfortable. Jesus is going to threaten the comfortable and the powerful. There's no doubt that Jesus is also more life-giving and worthy.
worthy of our most precious gifts, even our very lives. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's stand together as we confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in, in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, our only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. seated. At this time, we're going to give of our gifts to God. Um, and if you decide you do want to give a gift card to Jesus this year, this is the time you can do that. Um, you can make your give your financial offering online um, or there on, on our website, memorialumc.church. And you can also, um, you can set up a recurring payment if that makes it easier for you. Um, and you can also text your offering today to 73256, 73256, and then in the actual message, put Memorial UMC, one word, and the amount you want to give. We also have offering plates on your way out the door today if you would rather give here in-house. Let's dwell on the ways that we can give of ourselves to God.
Today, as we enter into a time of prayer, um, I invite everybody to grab their hymnal and turn to page 607. 607. Um, today, we're going to be saying a prayer for our prayers of the people um, that is often said on, uh, at the beginning of the year. This is a covenant prayer in the Wesleyan tradition, um, often attributed to, to John Wesley. And, um, and so on this first Sunday of 2021, um, I invite you to make this a renewal of your baptismal covenant in some way. Um, as before we begin in prayer, I do want to invite everybody to take a look at your prayer list and see all of the folks that are mentioned there on the, uh, on the prayer list that is sent out on Wednesdays. Um, there are uh, a lot of folks who are in need of prayer, a lot of folks who are in the hospital right now, several folks who were affected by COVID. Um, I do want to say what a joy it is to have Jesse back with us today. Um, and uh, yeah, it's so good to have you, Jesse, and feeling well. And please know that Jay Lee will continu continue to be in our prayers as he continues to struggle from COVID as well. Um, let's pray this prayer together. I am no longer mine own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee. Exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine and I am thine, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. And now with confidence we're bold to pray, Our Father, who art, who art in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on, on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing all four verses of O Little Town of Bethlehem.
pay attention for the stars in the sky continue to lead us in rejoicing. They continue to lead us to the Christ child who at last will redeem this broken world. Go forth from this place dwelling on what you can give to Christ that's lavish, profligate, and joyous. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go with grace. Amen. Thank you. 